Welcome back to another edition of the All Sports Podcast with myself, Blake Tan and Harry Keeling, and of course, Dossa Mackey. Welcome back. Um, it's been great to see. We've had a huge round of numbers coming in, joining in our great show, and we really appreciate all of, of the um First and foremost, let's introduce the panel. As always, welcome aboard. He's on my screen at the moment. So welcome aboard uh, again, uh, Kane and Mackie. Thanks, Blakey, mate. Another episode, eh? Another Monday yeah. night spent talking some stuff. Looking forward to it. Big episode this one. This is a big episode. And welcome aboard as well. Back to another edition. Uh, Harry Keeling, welcome aboard, mate. Cheers, Blakey. Excited to be here. Can't wait for the episode, mate. Yeah, as you touched on, this is going to be a huge episode because we have our first special guest and that great man that is about to join us in moments' time is the voice of Melbourne. Now, this guy has been part of basketball and football communities now for over 30 years. He's been a ground announcer at Marvel Stadium currently right now and, of course, swings a bit down at the uh, the rifle home of the MCG, but he is well known at the Melbourne United Basketball Club as their um, MC host. He always hypes the crowd up, that's for sure. Could you please welcome to the All Sports Podcast, Wayne Peterson, to the show. Well, what, what an introduction. It's been a while since I've uh, been pumped up that much, Blakey. <laughs> No, I thought I'd pump you up, mate. Um, how you been, mate? Um, obviously, you've um, got Melbourne United coming up. The season's just about to start. Uh, must be getting pretty pumped. And I think you were at the Boomers game. Is that correct? On the weekend as well. So busy weekend. Oh, yeah. It just doesn't stop for you, mate. Oh, just sport in general is uh, it's unbelievable when you live in Melbourne how how good we've got it. You know the AFLs. Getting to a crescendo. Some of the games that we're witnessing there, I, I see some nice jumpers behind uh, Kados there, up on the wall, and some nice stuff there. But the AFL, and then the the Matildas, and then you know the Boomers checking out for their World Cup. The Diamonds won the netball. I, I can't keep up with how good as a country we are at sport. And then yeah, the NBL season. Well, the the guys off over to the World Cup first, which is. Going to be interesting. There was a good game against France uh, yesterday, last night. So, um, yeah, it's all happening, mate. If you if you don't love sport, you, you should be living right here in in Melbourne or Australia. That's for sure. Yes, that's correct. Um, so first and foremost, mate, I'll kick things off with the first question. Um, how is Melbourne United going? Um, you know, we touched on about them failed to make finals last year. It was I would say pretty disappointing, to be honest, just with the uh, roster that. United have, and I feel like this year could be uh, another great season with United. They've picked up Luke Travers, of course, um, and they've picked up Ian Clark, which I think is a great signing for Melbourne United. Uh, and they've also picked up one of the greatest Australian boomers to exist, I reckon, in the last decade or so, Matthew Dalavadova. How is United tracking? Um, how do you think they're going? Yeah, it's, um, it's funny. Uh, the Basketball season sort of trickles along a little bit during footy season. Then you start hearing things, especially with the World Cup, you start hearing them. And I live, you know, around the corner from where Melbourne United trained at Hoop City in Cheltenham. I'm two minutes away and I heard this rumour about who was turning up to practice this one day and, and I didn't get down there for that one, but I went the next day and just watched the guys work out and saw some of the team that were new to the squad. Flynn Cameron, who's a the son of Perro Cameron, who... You know, I called his name out about 20 years ago when he played <laughs> played for New Zealand. And uh, he's he's going to be real good. So if you keep an eye out for him, he's he's built a little bit different than his dad. And then you you got the stalwarts and Ian Clark. Yeah, I, I was surprised when I saw that one. So, you know, what happens in the NBL at the moment is the egos of the owners are probably bigger than the players. So when yeah. they say we need, you know, we didn't make the playoffs, well, we're going to go to our wallet and we're going to pump up and we're going to we're going to win it this year. So it's a little bit different to what it used to be back in the day with Gaze and Purchase and Copeland and Bradkey, where people had sort of come and play for Lindsay, not a lot of money going around and they'd sort of build a team. Now it's we're going to win it this year. There's no building. It's not it's not like the AFL. We're going to go and we're going to pump it up and we're going to get it done this year. So, and everyone's doing it. It's uh, you look at the teams. Some of the teams that are loading up with some of the talent, it's it's going to be a really good season, I think. It's funny yeah, you say that. Sorry, Blakey. I'll just jump in. It's funny you saying that, 
uh, Wayne O, because I reckon local footy's turned it into a bit like that these days. You see blokes that play for a bit of money and they'll go to a club for one year and try to win a flag and then and then they're off to their next club. So it's, yeah, really interesting you say that. Uh, well, I know yeah, there's just... a bit of yeah, I know a little bit about sorry, sorry, like a little bit about local oh. footy as well. A few people I know that used to play around the traps and I don't, I don't know where they get their money from, some of the local clubs, but they've got some cash. And I think yeah. the brown paper bag might still play, play a role in local footy a little bit. But it's some local teams that have got some cash because they've got that support behind them, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a matter of fact of who you got around your club that's putting money in. you got a big plumbing yeah. company or a bloody farmers ch chippy. Out. Yeah, farmers, yeah. You, you're laughing. So. <laughs> yeah. um, just one more question, Wayne, before I hand it over to the panel um, as well. Um, who who do you think in the NBL this year uh, will be your biggest riser? You know, I think judging from the latter last year, obviously, you know, Mount United, I don't want to, I know you'll probably say them, but I think you've then got to put on a bit more respect. So maybe Illawarra, New Zealand Breakers have picked up pretty well, Adelaide 36ers, yeah. all these other sides as well. But who, who in your eyes will be the biggest riser uh, this year in the NBL? We well, say Adelaide, but they were supposed to be good last year. They they loaded up last year and they didn't quite make it. Um, Illawarra, you know, they always chip away. Sydney will be there. But my thing is this, and Lindsay Gaze used to say this a lot, a champion team will always beat a team of champions. And so they can yeah. go and load up on as many players as they want until, you know, I'm going up for the Blitz next, when is that, next week or the week after? A couple of weeks up on the Goldie. So... I'm going up there to do some announcing for the Blitz games. That'll be a little bit of a, a telling factor as to how the teams are going to gel together. Um, after that, it's round one, two, three. You see some players, you know, Jerome Randall, he can't fit with that guy. He doesn't play with that guy. His ego, there's still a lot of that to play out. So who knows? Even with Melbourne United, oh, you know, you've loaded up. You guys are going to be great. No, not yet. We're not. Not until, you know, CG43 can still get his shots. Not until those guys can still play that role. You know, we don't have Warwick Giddy anymore that doesn't never shot a three-pointer in his life. It was all about just rebounding and making a good pass to Andrew Gaze on a backdoor cup so Drew could get his 40. That doesn't happen anymore. There's a lot of egos. There's a lot to deal with. A coach is a, a psychologist more than anything else, I reckon, at the moment. So who knows? Let's, let's wait for the blitz and let's wait for the start of the season to see whether the teams can actually play with each other. Yep. Perfect. So well, I'll hand it over to the rest. Ask a few questions. Yeah, I'll start with one of my ones. I had my first thing was, what's the best game you've ever uh, voiced, either basketball, football, whatever it is? Well, it'd have to be. Well, in, in AFL football, it's funny. Um, Jason McCartney came back from Bali after the Bali bombings and played that one game at Marvel. Yes, yes. And then... We were unaware. We we didn't know what was going to happen. And then he announced his retirement on the ground at the end of that game, and and it went live to the bowl, and that was, um, that was you know amazing. That that sort of sticks in my memory as one of the AFL games that, you know, the the best game basketball I've ever done would have to be the Sydney Olympics gold medal game USA Lithuania two thousand at the Sydney Olympics. That's, you know, I I was blessed to be asked to go up there and and announce at the Olympics. And then I got um, selected to do the gold medal game. So that was the best event that I've ever been involved with just across the board, you know, hanging out with the, the players. I stayed in the hotel, the Novotel on the site. We went to, you know, watch the water polo and saw them win a gold medal. And just some of the things that happened at that event were off the charts. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's cool. That was, oh, sounds like you've got a pretty good uh, resume behind you there then. Well, I've been lucky, mate. I, I rode on the coattails. I went to school with a, a bloke called Andrew Gaze, and um, I wasn't the greatest student of all time. And he was he was a bit of a teacher's pet, so he was a bit of a suck at school. But that, but I sort of rode with him, mate. And and, uh, <laughs> and then he could play a little bit of basketball. And I was sitting at Albert Park Stadium one night, and Bruce Palmer, who normally announces the the Wednesday night competition, was either he was drunk or tired or didn't make it, and. Lindsay said, Look, can you go up and make some announcements? And I said, yeah, no worries. And I started there at $7 a game on a Wednesday night it was, and um, <laughs> that was about 40 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds a bit old, would you say? You've got to start somewhere. 40 years ago. 
You got to start oh, somewhere. You got to start that's somewhere. It. That's yeah. it. I've got a young fella right now that's coming through. That um, his name's John O'Van, and he does some announcing and some of the the local football and stuff. And I, I picked him up on sort of LinkedIn, and I needed a backup for a couple of things that I was doing at at Marvel, and and um, I bought him in a few weeks ago. <laughs> and luck has it, there's a Richmond supporter, and I couldn't make the. Richmond played Geelong at the MCG on a Friday night. And I, I said, mate, I need you to do that game. And it was his first ever AFL announcing game. And he, and he walked into Richmond playing someone with 70,000 at the G. So, you know, he's going to get a start. If he, he hangs in there, does the right thing, does all the right things, he'll he'll make his way through and you never know where he could end up. So, Funny that way. No, he's actually one of my media team members at the Eastern Football Netball League. Oh, so, really? really? Yeah. He's um yeah he's a good fella, right, Jono. He um Great kid. He, yeah he does um he does a bit of that and he's also uh, stepping up this year. Um I think the, doing the ground announcing during the uh, finals campaign. So uh yes yep. so I'll let him know about that. Yeah, I'm sure he will love that. So yeah yeah he's gonna be good. He'll he'll back me up at, at Marvel if I ever need a break. I do like fifty or sixty games there a year, so there's times when I need to get away from that. But um, so he'll back up a little bit there. But yeah, no, he's he's a good kid. And you got to just, you know, you got to take your opportunities when they come. You got to just um, just be there. Sometimes work for free. Um, do the right thing by everyone, and you never know where it could get you. That's that's what happened. But he hasn't, you know, hasn't been about the money. At the moment, and now I make a living out of this, and I, I do a lot of football games, a lot of basketball games, but I've I've been very lucky, so very happy with um, with how it's all worked out. But you know, I used to, like I said, seven dollars a game on a Wednesday night. I was earning twenty one dollars um, announcing three games on a Wednesday, and uh, and that took me to the Sydney Olympics. So fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it's, that's pretty cool. And I got a second question. Who's the best player you think's ever played for the Melbourne United? Andrew Gay's the best player I've ever seen. Like as a as a player, and you talk about if people talk about all these players and stats and what he does, and he averaged 40. 40 in a season. Averaged. Not 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 got 40 like every second week or got 40. You know, he had 40 uh, a few weeks ago. Oh, he's had 28. He averaged 40 in the NBL. He was the his He's the leading scorer at the Olympic Games. I oh, know, second leading scorer at the Olympic Games. So the most points scored at Olympic Games was by Andrew Gaze. Well, the guy went, the guy, the guy took brought basketball back to Australia the first time ever when he went to Seton Hall, played that one season, and they they brought that game live back into Australia. First time ever. They brought an NCAA final back into Australia live. Then he went and played with the San Antonio Spurs, even though it was injury replacement at that time. But he was on that roster for the whole time. They loved him. I actually spent about six weeks over there, best six weeks of my life. But they um, they loved him. And, you know, he played in the NBA. He probably wasn't there the right time. But he's, he's the best pure shooter that I reckon I've seen. I didn't actually know that he averaged 40 points in a season. That's pretty remarkable. <laughs> That's pretty pretty, <laughs> not pretty not crazy. Not, when he's... not just he got nah. 40. He, aver- he averaged for 40. <laughs> That's Crazy. Uh, I got people fit- like Darren Lucas. Sorry, with people like Darren Lucas and and Mike Kelly, who's now a coach, and I love Mike. He's one of the greatest guys to come out from the from the um the US. But but those guys hanging off his shoulders, mate. Darren Lucas, you know, hitting him in the ribs and punching him and pinching him, and and he got he's still average forty. Yeah, crazy effort. Um, so you, obviously you've been at Melbourne when they were Melbourne Tigers as well. What was your um? Obviously, during your yep. time, they would have won a few championships. Does any championship stick out to be your favourite when calling? Well, it's funny, mate. The the first three championships were all won on the road, so I never called any any championships. The first championship I called at our home venue was a Melbourne United Championship. So the other ones were won on the road. The first one was in Perth, and we had a little function at. A, at a venue, then we went out to the airport and met the guys when they came back. And that was probably the first time I actually drank alcohol at the age of 27. <laughs> and that's no <laughs> lie. And uh, I had my first uh, my shot of a, a cowboy, I think it was, or a Bacardi Breezer or whatever. But, but that was, we went out and I think I was drunk after two alcoholic drinks. But um, yeah, so the first three didn't, didn't 
call them at home. Call the, you know, one of the games or whatever, but the championship game was always one on the road. So the Melbourne United game um, that we won at home was pretty special. But the first championship in 93, just for Lindsay and Andrew as a family was, um, yeah, that was pretty good. So it was the, the United one that you called, was that 2018 or 2021? No, it was one, uh, it was 18, the first one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it would have been, yeah, 18 then. That was at the, uh, yeah, the home game where we won it at um, John Kane Arena. Yeah. And they're all blue. I'm not, not great with dates. No, no, that's I don't right. know what's going on tomorrow, I've let alone. Got me know, research in front of me, mate. So that... Oh, cool. Um, you tell me and I'll just go, yeah, mate, that's it. Well, okay. <laughs> Thanks, brother. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, you, you touched on uh, Andrew Gaze before, but do you have a favourite player that gets you hyped up when you're calling, when they do something special, get you up and about? Well, I know okay, well, it's pretty special, but um, favorite players, yeah, they all, yeah, probably, um, probably Copes. He was, he was exciting and he used to tell everyone how good he was as well, which made him special. You always ask people whether they have Foxtel so they could go home and watch the replay of him later on. <laughs> but some of the stuff that, um, you know, I think back, back in the day, um, I had a different relationship with the, the players because I was friends with them as well as so hanging out with them was was what we used to do. These days it's more it's just a professional sport that we've got to you know I, I still know the players but we hang out at functions but back then we used to go out 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 to clubs. I don't even know what that is right now whether they're still open but um, we used to go out and hang out and it was a different relationship I had with the guys so that's probably more of where I was right into it and, and uh, I'm still right into it. If I ever lose the passion, I'll stop. But, um, but then the relationship with the players was at a different level. There was a more of friendship as well. Yeah. Interesting. Um, just another quick one before I hand, hand it back over to Blakey. Can you just talk us through your day to day, like life in as your job, like what, in, what, what involves the, like, what do you do during the week to prepare or anything? <laughs> <laughs> or do you have a do you have another job? Or... Oh wow! Prepare. <laughs> well, I'll prepare. I do have another job. I do have another job, but um, not too much. I've I've slowed right down. I I, I, I did um work on a lot when um back in the day, but if we're talking about right now, um, so I had three games on the weekend at Marvel, um. I drive. I do drive a truck for a, a little company, a garden supply company. For I tell them I only want two days. They normally want me for three or four days. Um, and I do a a couple of. I've done a couple of housing developments. So I've got one going at the moment where I've subdivided some land and I'm building two houses in Moorabbin and and sort of I've dabbled in that area to make some money, which has been good. Um, but I've done I've done everything, mate. I, I've I've worked in sales. I've worked for the Melbourne Tigers. I've owned two Subway stores, an Eagle Boys pizza franchise. Um, I've had a test and tag electrical business. Uh, my daughter says she's collecting all the business cards. She's got a whole book of them. But um, I've I've done a lot of stuff, and uh, yeah, you just got to do. I, I'm I just do what it, what whatever it takes. I, I get pretty bored. So at the moment I'm building a camper van so I can go surfing and sleep in it and wake up and get some waves in the morning. But um, yeah, I just love being out there and getting active. Anything to do with sport. I do a lot with Melbourne United. Their double decker bus used to go out. We go out to schools and do quite a few things called game time where the team come out and we do um, promotion out at school. So um, yeah, back in the day I did a fair bit more, you know, with Shaq. Did some stuff when Shaq came out, when Kobe came out. Um, been a long, been a long haul. It's been good. I've been lucky. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. Any other questions, boys? No, I think he's pretty much answered into everything. Yeah. yeah. Surely well, not. Surely <laughs> there's got to be something else. I've got a few more, but it depends how long we've got. Like I've got one more uh, for you. Um, just a quick one. 
Do you think Bryce Cotton from the Perth Wildcats is up to Andrew Gaze? Like, do you think those two players are the two best players in the NBL? But which one do you think is better? I know you probably say Gaze, but do you think Cotton's in that conversation at the moment with Andrew Gaze? Did he average 40? Yeah, I think. <laughs> Good question, Kados. Blakey, <laughs> Got to answer oh, me. I, I I don't think he averaged forty, nah. but he um. I, know. I think one year he had a 30, 30 point career. I think yeah, one of his MVPs. So, but I, I just think that Bryce is in that conversation. But do you agree that he's yeah, yeah. hundred yeah. percent? Like you, you go and watch, you know, even, <laughs> even when you're calling the game, and I and, and lately I I sort of roam a little bit more than what I used to because they kick me off the bench because. They they reckon they sold the um, seats to the, some influence or some something. I reckon they just wanted to get me off the bench because I talk too much. But um, so that I I, <laughs> I I roam a little bit now, and there's times where I'll be sort of roaming and and Cotton will be playing and he'll he'll hit some jump shot from the corner and you'll and I'll just look at the guy next to me and go, wow, he's he's a he's very special. He sort of backed off a little bit last season, I think. He sort of come back to the field a little bit, but but he's been um, an unbelievable player, one that sort of cemented himself in, in Perth, stayed with the, the same club. Um, yeah, well and truly one of the best players that's, that's ever played in the National Basketball League, for sure. Perfect, mate. All righty. Um, well, uh, from the All Sports Podcast team, mate, uh, just want to say a massive uh, thank you for uh, giving up a bit of your time on a Monday night. Um, it's been a pleasure having you on, mate, and um, go United. I think that's what I want. I think um, I'm predicting them to do a top three finish this year, so I'm really excited for that. Uh, good luck in the Blitz, mate, and I uh, believe you're a mad Saints fan, so you'll be pretty happy about uh, St Kilda uh, at the moment because they are going very strong at the moment, and uh, all the best for the final series, mate. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'm not sure where you got that information from, Blake, but it's incorrect. I'm actually oh. a Swan supporter. Oh, no. Oh, I'm actually oh, a Swan. Oh, I, I, I grew up in Port Melbourne, used to go to South Melbourne, so I, I don't mind the Saints. I, I get around the Saints. Oh, I thought you would honestly a Saints fan because I, I hear you all the time saying, go Saints, go Saints, and you're hanging around my Well, I have to, mate. That's paid. That's, That's his job. That's his job, Blakey. Like, you know? like oh, you, you, you sucked me in that uh, way, no, here, mate. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, people, mate. I think I told me you thought I was a Western Bulldog stand because I give them. <laughs> oh, oh, no, that's an all time low there. Anyway, um, but the Swans like, are cruising at the moment. I don't know if that was a go or not. <laughs> Bye. Lucky. Lucky. <laughs> lucky, mate. We're lucky. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, mate, uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, keep doing what you're doing, mate, because you're doing an amazing job for uh, people like myself because people do look up to you, um, and um, it's amazing um, what can do from a from a Wednesday night basketball to where you are now. So uh, congratulations on all your achievements and all that that you've done, mate, and um, I'm glad uh, that we got to get you on here, mate, because um, it's been a pleasure. So thank you, mate. No worries. Any any time, any information. If you need, got any questions, any information, if I can get you along to some game, a game or something like that. Be happy to have you come along and just hang out. You know, it'd be awesome. So, just stay in touch. I'm I'm not great on social media. I sort of went a little bit quiet on social media for a while for <laughs> for whatever reason here and there. But I've I've backed off on Instagram and and stuff like that a little bit. But yeah, I'm still on Messenger and. But if you ever, yeah, if you ever want anything or any information or just ask a question about anything, just hit me up, boys. No problem. Thanks very much for having me. Good on you, Wayne. Yeah. Thanks, Cheers, mate. Wayne. Go the Swans. I think it's gone quite. <laughs> well, there you have it, uh, Wayne. Go the Swanies. Yeah, you go. There it is. Go the Swanies. <laughs> Man. Legend. Well, what a man! Just the, you know, just the way he talked, and you know, it's a great story about what his story's been, and um, to to do what he's doing, like from what he said, is just an exceptional. Like to call three games of Wednesday night basketball, and mm. now he's uh, calling one of the most powerhouse clubs in the in the land in the NBL. So, thank you for that, Wayno. Hey, um, bought ourselves a couple of free tickets to the United game. Yeah. Yeah. Go, boys. And done all right. So, 
We I'm sorry. Right. I was just looking up. Andrew Gay's averaged 44 in a season. That's fucked. 44, 8, yeah. and 12 or something. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, that's why they caught the uh, Andrew Gay's uh, award for the MVP. So he won like six in a row or something. Yes. He's incredible. Ridiculous. Um, I don't think Wayne O really understood me question when I asked him. <laughs> Day to day life, talking. I was meaning like what he does on a fucking game day sort of thing, and he went yeah. on. That was about his actual life, but anyway, yeah. that was that was good. Good on him. Yeah. All righty. Uh-huh. Uh, so that was our first official guest. Uh, don't worry, it will be more. I'll try. Uh, do what I've been doing around the around the grounds. Try and do all the hard work and try and get someone for us. Uh, for that, of course, we got finals footy. So I'll be uh on the hunt there to, to try and get someone. But let's go back to the show, what we've been doing. And uh, I think we're up to the footy chat. Yep. Footy, 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 footy. All right. Blakey, did you want to do local footy first or the AFL? Yeah, we'll go local footy first and then we'll get let's into the, get the AFL. That's all good, mate. Uh, well... Well, we, uh, the Eastern Footy League have officially started their uh, finals uh, campaign. Uh, and boy, was it a few good games from, uh, of course, first division to uh, fourth division. couple crackers as well. And I'll get into them because it's been a big week. But I'll start off with Premier. I think um, it was a big couple of games. Uh, two games that were massive in Premier because Noble Park, the reigning Premiers from last year in Premier, will not be taking part in the finals uh, campaign because the Blackburn Footy Club have officially knocked out Noble Park with a big win over East Ringwood. 13-5-83 defeated East Ringwood. 7-15-57. But Bourne did the chockies over Noble Park to end their season. 9-11-65 to Noble Park. 6-9-45. South Croydon avoided relegation uh, this year with a big win over Norwood. 9-13-67, defeated Norwood, 3-12-30. So inaccurate kicking is what cost them. But unfortunately, Park Orchards will be in first division next year. Even though they won, 11-11-77, defeated Berwick, 9-14-68. Rover, the biggest winners in the whole competition, had a massive win against Doncaster, 37-10, 232, defeated Doncaster, 6-7-7. 43. So an absolute uh, travesty down there. Vermont, yeah, good old winners. Good old oh, shlanking that. That is yeah. fucking pull your pants down. And Vermont lock up yet another minor premiership, which is I don't like it. I uh, know Vermont fans would, but uh, moving on because I cannot stand Vermont, uh, unfortunately. Sorry to the listeners. Uh, we go into finals now. Uh, first division, oh, my God, my beloved Montrose, they gave me a heart attack um, as well. I thought Mitchum would come from the clouds, but they hang on tough. 10-8-68, defeated Mitchum, 10-7-67. In extra time, boys, uh, what was your thoughts? Did you, were you there? Did you, um, when you're hearing live updates, I know you guys like going and watching the footy, but... Did you hear live updates, or did you did you go to the game yourself, or where did you hear all this? No, I d- we didn't go to the game, Blakey. We um we had our silly Saturday on Saturday at the footy club. So myself oh. and Harry were down at the club, but my old man was at the game, and he um he was giving me updates of the game, and um by the sounds of it, yeah, Mitch and were coming. So, but yeah. good on good good win by Montrose. Hold on, by a point. Yeah. Yeah, speaking of that, I know it's off topic, but how was the silly Sunday, boys? Uh, did you get up to anything silly up there at, down at the uh, stable? They call it down there. No, uh, not too much. We went too bad. Uh, did we? What time we leave? We left at about four o'clock. We had to go for my girlfriend's twenty first, so we left about four o'clock. Nothing too silly, but we didn't get home to about four thirty on uh Sunday morning, so. Yeah, so where where was the after? Where did you go afterwards? Yeah, we went out for dinner in Richmond and then went to the precinct um until they closed. Oh, oh that old place. <laughs> Jeez, that's a <laughs> uh, You've been there a couple of times, have you, Blakey? Pardon? You've been there a couple of times, have you? 
Oh, mate, more than a couple. That's for sure. Uh, like, <laughs> like, on, like tenant think... dance floor, apparently. So. Oh. <laughs> Security guards know my name. Oh, that's concerning. Uh, anyway, uh, the next final uh, match of the round, of course, the Eastland match of the round between North Fringwood and the Beaconsfield Footy Club. Beaconsfield first finals in the Eastern Football League, but it wasn't the case. North Fringwood win their first final since 2014 with a big win. 11 6 72 defeated Beaconsfield 7 6 48. So, uh, congratulations to Beaconsfield, but this is just a start, I reckon. Um, just give them a couple more years, and I feel like they will be up there yet again, back where they were in the South East. So, good effort. Congratulations. Good, though, Blake, considering they had their three, probably their three best players not playing. Yes. I mean, Johnson, yeah, so. Jafar, okay. and um, yeah. Jake Bowd. They have three yeah. pretty good ins. So it's good effort by them. But... Yeah. Next game, of course, we move to second division. Uh, Tempest, though, a shock here. I felt like Waverley would have had a chance here, but a shocking start from Waverley costing the game here. 11 6 72, defeated by Temple Stowe, 15 15 105. Heathmont defeated Mulgrave as well. Uh, 16 13 109 defeated uh, Mulgrave 8 14 62. So, Mulgrave season officially done now. Uh, they had a good run, but unfortunately, it wasn't the case. Uh, on the weekend, move on to Division 3 now. Donvale uh, stamped their authority on the, the Division 3 Premiership Cup with a big win over Furniture Gully 18 7 115 defeated Furniture Gully 4 12. 36. Now, this one's the big one because this went viral, this kick. Uh, Oakley District won after the siren. You wouldn't believe it. After the siren, 7 8 50 defeated Sylvan 7 4 46. Uh, incredible. I thought wouldn't believe it, Blake. Me either. I was, um, no, no, was, uh, let, let me. You would not believe it. The bloke that kicked the goal after the siren is my neighbor. Your neighbor. He's my neighbor. Yep. <clears throat> Jack Dobson. Jack Dobson is my neighbor. I didn't know he was playing in the ones. I thought he was playing twos all year, but he Jeez. kicked for as well. So he's mate, done it you right. could have brought him on on the podcast, yeah. mate. <laughs> yeah. Did you have a good cartoon, did you? Uh, no, nah, I just shot him a message saying, good work. Hey, <laughs> good work. <laughs> he's just brought a kick up. <laughs> anyway, uh, moving along now, uh, fourth division, Hillside, they stamped their authority yet again on the division four, same as like Donvale and Baronia, but they went 8 12 60, defeated Surrey Park 7 6 48. And unfortunately, Churnside Park season ended on Sunday as well 8 14 62, defeated by Scoresby in. I'm oh, sorry, 8, 8 11 59 defeated by Scoresby, 8 14 62. Now, I just want to touch on a quick game before Caden goes off to his AFL. Um, we want to touch on in the West Gippsland Football League. We touched on that, in, I think, in the first episode. Philip Island played uh, Inverloch uh, Konya on the weekend, uh, and it was a draw. Better this it time, Loki. Was... Good to see you pronounce it better this time. Yes, uh, it was a draw. You wouldn't believe it. Um, the two top sides in the competition, and it was a draw. So, um, what are your thoughts there, Caden? The proud Cognac uh, then? Yeah, I'm a proud Envy boy. Um, I think Inverloch had the top spot sealed up, but um, yeah, they've got they're still a fair way ahead. But um, no, nah, I thought Philip Island. I haven't watched Philip Island play, but from all reports, it's between the those two clubs. Um, I think Turidan have dropped off a little bit since their premiership last year. But yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a um Inverloch versus Phillip Island grand final Blake. You agree? Yeah. I think their final series is a top six. So um okay. Inverloch and I think they'll play each other again in two weeks time. So Yeah. Just looking at the fixture here now. Yeah, they'll play each other on the second of September. So um yeah, it should be interesting. It should be. But I think um just quickly before we move on, one of the players that plays for Coralyn, his name's Nathan Gardner. 
kicked a hundred goals for the season. So that's Fair a pretty way. kicked kicked eight on the weekend. So um, imagine the scenes down there at uh, Coralin. <laughs> Coralin, yeah, where they they played at Curry Up. So oh, okay, um, so I must have heard the big coo rap down there. So <laughs> very interesting then. Alrighty, now it's time for AFL with Dossa. Just quickly, Blakey, um, can we get a welfare check on your brother? Is he alright? Oh, the step ladder. Step ladder. <laughs> step ladder. <laughs> Jesse, oh. my from Mitchum's still on his way down. He's been up there. He's got altitude sickness. Oh, there for it's it's, uh, it's done the rounds, hasn't it? Um, he was he fell down on the Sunday. Um, he thought he would get away from it. Um, the big fella, but um, I don't think uh, that was getting away any quicker. <laughs> He's handled it pretty well, Bowie. Like, what do you mean? Like, he's copped it on the chin. He hasn't really shied away from it. He's admitted it's a great mark, so credit to yeah. him. Oh, to do it on two plays, too. I think the I think the worst bit was uh, Jaden Bowringer from, from Montrose. He copped the worst bit about yeah, it. He's he got on him. Yeah, he's ended on him. Yeah. So, there's that. Um, that's it. That's very funny. Nah, very good. All right, we'll move to the AFL. So, round 23, Friday night. Collingwood got beaten by the Brisbane Lions by four goals. Come on. Um, yeah, Collingwood, again, conceded 100 points. There's a lot of concerns at the Magpies, in, and I am very concerned for them. So um, I will not touch too much on them, but I will give you a, my prediction on Collingwood. They will go out in straight sets. Big call. Good call. Yeah. I just don't – the way they're playing – I think clubs have figured them out and they just don't look like winning a finals game, to be honest with you. So I hope I'm wrong, but I don't think I will be. Anyway, next game. Sorry, Caden. Just just a quick yep. one. Collingwood would have Melbourne uh, first week of finals. Let's just say the season ended this week. And you know what the worst bit about it is? If, if they, they lose, play, they fucking Carlton. They, or GWS. Mm. But I would say Carlton... At the moment, so that's two big games for the Pies. Unfortunately, um, it could be on the money there. Yeah, unless Port Adelaide lose to Richmond this week. I don't think that's happening, mate. There's no key forward, uh, for Richmond, uh, this week with Revolt, um, not playing anymore. So it's gonna be interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll touch on Richmond now. They played North at the G. They won by five goals in Jack Rerolt and Trent Cotchin's last game. Blake, you weren't there, were you, mate? No, unfortunately, I was on the radio, but uh, I saw the uh, thing after the game, and, geez, it was a great moment um, in Richmond's uh, history. I think that's probably the biggest retirement game I've seen since uh, Matthew Richardson's retirement game back yep. in uh, 2008, even though I wasn't born. I re-watched it, actually, um, during the weekend. Just seeing the crowd, just seeing everyone get around the big Richo man. He was such a, a big servant to the Richmond Footy Club. And, you know, what what happened during the for the Richmond Footy Club back then was pretty bad. But before I want to, I want to get this topic underway. Jack's evil, boys. Like, come on. Like, who would have the audacity... To just hit Jack Zebel. He's one of the most nicest blokes I've met him once, and he's one of the most nicest blokes I've ever met. And I just don't understand what idiot dickhead would decide to hit Jack uh, Zebel like that. Oh, come on, like, what's your thoughts on that, boys? Oh, there's some fuckwits out in the world, mate. So yeah. uh, I'm not surprised, but yeah, it's disappointing. Like, obviously, Jack was out celebrating, trying to put an end to his fantastic career, and it's ended pretty badly. So, um, yeah. yeah, to the thug that did it, pull your fucking head in. I hope you get jail time or whatever it is. So, yeah, yeah. Lowered, your, lowered your levels really badly there. But I saw something on the news before that Zebel, uh had surgery today. So, um, obviously, it's pretty bad. So, I'd imagine that guy would be facing some charges, I hope. I hope so, yeah. Any thoughts on that, Harry, or are you just fucking muting yourself again, mate? Looking uh, at you in the mirror. You two just fucking talk shit nonstop. It's hard to get a word in. Oh, well, fucking put, jump in and tell us to shut up. Oh, sorry, mate. 
Oh, I think it's a bit. Fuck, don't be sorry. Are... Don't be sorry. Just be better. People are fucking stupid. That's the problem. Like, why the fuck are you just randomly hitting a bloke when he walks out of a club? Like, from what it sounds like, like mm-hmm. he had nothing to do with anything, and as soon as he's walked out, they just whacked him. Yeah. Piss- like, it's pretty fucking poor. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I hope that something gets done about it, and I hope they find the bloke. Yeah, they will. They will. Yeah. Um, and then following on from that, Blakey, what do you think of the old uh, Tyler Sonsi incident? Yeah, I think that's probably a big one. Uh, five, five weeks. Minimum. So, minimum. Yes. Uh, just a, yeah. I, I don't know if it's a open hand and the player overreacted or was it a clear fist? I don't know. So um, either way, I think if it was a, if it was a open hand, and the player just overreacted, then that could be looked at as maybe, you know, maybe a week or two. But if it's a fist, then definitely uh, two, probably five, seven weeks, I reckon. Well, I think he's they've deemed that it's been a, a closed fist because it's been to sent directly to the tribunal, which is a minimum of five weeks, they've said. So I think Very he's interesting. Like- I think he's looking at six or seven, I reckon. Maybe even more could be. I reckon a minimum of six he'll get. We shot himself in the foot because he's probably going to play this week for the... I reckon he would have played this week. Well, and he's, he's even shot himself in the foot for VFL finals because they're in the wild card as well. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. All right, we'll move on to the next game. Gold Coast lost to Carlton by four points in what was a great effort by the Blue uh, Suns. GWS absolutely smashed the Bombers by 126 points. Pretty embarrassing for the Bombers considering they have a chance to make finals. They are getting getting more irrelevant by the day, Essendon. Mm. Piss ball by Essendon. Even if they lose by 10, 20 points, they've got a chance at winning the next game for finals with their percentage. And now they've just completely fucked themselves. Pretty much. They'll probably come out and beat Collingwood on Friday night, though. Yeah. But they don't need to beat them by like 100 and GWS to lose by 100 for them to have any chance. So, not going to make finals, but still. Got themselves in the foot right there. Yeah. Saturday night saw Harry Saints defeat the reigning Premier's Geelong by 33 points, which sees the Cats officially eliminated from making the Come on. 2023. <laughs> uh, the other game on Saturday night ended in controversy. Adelaide defeated by Sydney by one point. Ben Keys was doing a lap of honour in what was a goal but was called a point. Do you boys think it was a goal? It was a clear goal, mate. It was like, a goal. It was yeah. a goal. It can clearly see it misses the post. Like, nothing about it. It's just rattling that usually the goal umpires, if they're not sure, they're going... Yeah. Theirs, but this one was certain that it hit the post. But I mean, it's costed Adelaide a, a finals chance, really. Like, that's the bottom line. Yeah. Like, they win that game there. What are they? One, well, they were percentage out, or they might be in even. I don't know. But I think they would have been percentage out, but they're playing West Coast this weekend. They're playing West Coast, which they could mm. beat by 140. Like, yeah, it's pretty bad. It didn't happen. It's interesting the AFL and Gill coming out and saying they got it wrong. But it the, is uh, like the, the worst bit about it was is the goal umpire actually got told to stood down, like he's been stood down. Mm, I saw so that he won't be uh officiating any more games, which is pretty pretty harsh, I reckon, for one mistake. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know, it's yeah. a big mistake though. I do understand it, but like. Any other line of like work, you don't cop any. Like AFL players make hundreds of mistakes throughout a whole year, like hundreds and hundreds. That nothing happens. This bloke makes one mistake and his his job's pretty much done. Like I feel bad for him, but at the same time, it did cost a finals berth for Adelaide. It is a big mistake he has made. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, next game on Sunday was the West Coast Eagles defeating the Bulldogs by seven points. Bevo has to go. That's all I have to say. Yeah. I think Bevo might be on the chopping box. But they can still make finals, the dogs. So they've got to beat Geelong. Long, though. So safe St Kilda, though. Now we're in. Thank God. So I'm a bit of a West Coast supporter now. St Kilda and Sydney officially um, qualified for finals. So that's, that's interesting. Um, 
Melbourne versus Hawthorne on Sunday afternoon. Melbourne too good by 27 points. Good effort by the Hawks though. Uh, and then Sunday afternoon, Port Adelaide defeated Fremantle by 16 points at Optus Stadium on Blakey's favourite time. Oh, it is the worst time slot. Like, have we ever seen a Twilight game that's actually produced something? Like, I think the best Twilight game I've seen is probably the um, Collingwood security game in Gather Round. That's what I think is yeah. the best game um, on a Twilight. Like, I just haven't seen like these Twilight games are more like uh, get your roast ready, your Sunday roast ready, or a barbecue, or like just Sunday you know, roast goes right, apparently. No, it wasn't a Sunday roast, it was pulled pork rolls last night. So, pulled pork um, rolls. Yeah, yeah, so that is unreal. I'll definitely come over for that. <laughs> yeah, you finally yeah, awake we'll now, live Harry. pod next Sunday. Live pod next Sunday. What do you reckon? Live pod. Oh, could could do it. Yeah. We should have a live pod. We're all together. That'll be pretty nice. Yeah, we will. We'll get there. Yeah. Um. Next game. Oh, sorry. Round twenty-four. Last round of the year, boys. Here we go. So Friday night, Collingwood versus Essendon at the G. Um, yeah, I'll go Collingwood. I'm going Essendon. Yeah, of course you are. Yeah. Hawthorne versus Freo at the G Saturday afternoon. Hawthorne. Yeah. Got Hawthorne as well. Uh, North Melbourne Gold Coast at Tassie. I reckon North. I reckon Gold Coast just because Dimmer is a uh, sign there. They want to put on a big performance for him. I'm going to ask a few, a few questions about that after this, Blake. Um, yeah, I'm going Gold Coast, though. Going Gold Coast as well. Brisbane versus St. Kilda at the Gabba. Brisbane. Brisbane. Geelong versus the Bulldogs at Geelong. I'm going I'm Geelong. Going to, I'm going to go the Doggies. I reckon they've got a lot to play for on Saturday night. So I'm Actually, going to go yeah, Geelong. I'm going to go Dogs as well because Cameron – I heard Jeremy Cameron might be going in for shoulder surgery. Yeah. I'm going Bulldogs as well. Um. Yep. Optus Stadium Saturday night. West Coast versus Adelaide. I think Adelaide. 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 But West Coast have announced that they will be doing a lap of honour for their three retirees with Luke Shuey, Nick Nadiui, and Shannon Hearn. So it's going to be a big night in the West on Saturday. So yeah, go. big big night. Uh Sunday afternoon, Port Adelaide versus Richmond at Adelaide Oval, Blakey. Your mob. Port Adelaide by 70 points. Jesus. Yeah. No face, Blakey. Well, we don't have a key four, mate. We don't, you know, it's just going to be very hard to watch uh, on Sunday. I'll still watch because I'm a proud man, proud Richmond man, and I always support the boys for the tough times. Uh, so I'm going to go uh, Richmond. Richmond will lose by 70. 70? Yeah. I just think... And I think Port Adelaide, I'm pretty sure if they they got to win by over 50, I think, to get second spot in that home final. I'm pretty sure. Don't hold me on it, but uh, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure if Port Adelaide win by 50-plus and Brisbane only just beat St Kilda, I think Port Adelaide can get a home final. I'm no, they've sure. got, they got to make up 12%. Yeah, so there you go. Like they that could 50 have... points? Nah, it's more than 50, I think, isn't it? Not sure, but it's a big margin. They're going to win by a big margin. So. They win by, but they need Collingwood to lose as well. So, yeah. But, um, <clears throat> next game: Sydney versus Melbourne at the G S C G. Melbourne. I'm going Sydney. Oh. Just get the S C G. Yeah. And then I'll G W S at Marvel on Sunday afternoon. Oh. Going the Giants. Going Giants. Yeah. <laughs> They're due for a loss and probably be good for them to get a loss in round 24 rather than the first week of finals. They'll lose the first final as well anyway, I reckon. Um, That's all for round 24 AFL. So I'll read for our team of the week. And then we got a, I got a few questions for you two and we'll talk about a couple of retirees that have been announced. Um, So round 24 team of the week. We may as well keep calling it Start calling up the Nick Newman team of the week because he is featured yet again. He's probably one of the hottest players in the AFL right now. He's on absolute fire. He's dominating the last month of footy right now. 
ridiculous. Just, just the way he rebounds the 50s and does all that, it's just incredible for the Blues. That's probably why he goes a bit unnoticed. Um, and that's probably why the Blues are doing what they're doing. His last four fantasy scores have been over 120 every game. It's yeah. fucking ridiculous. Anyway, so Newman in the p- pocket, Jeremy McGovern and Luke Ryan, half-back flank, Carl Amon, Tom Stewart, Jack Sinclair. In the midfield, we got Henry and Scott Pendlebury on the wings with Tom Green in the middle. Half forward line, Andrew Swallow, Nick Larkey, Dusty Martin. Forward pocket, Shy Bolton, Jesse Hogan after his nine goals, and Jamie Cripps. In the middle, we got Timmy English, the Ruckman, Sam Flanders, and Tim Kelly. On the interchange bench, Marcus Bontempelli, Rowan Marshall, Harry Sheasel, and Oscar Allen. And the sub this week, we have gone with Finn McGuinness after his very, very good tagging role on Clayton Oliver. How about the fiery uh, exchange at quarter time, though? <laughs> yeah, bit a bit in that. Yeah. Um, Blakey, oh, I've got a couple of questions for you, mate. Yeah. As a proud Richmond member like you are, you love your tykes. Yeah. How did you feel this morning when you saw Damien Hardwick with a Gold Coast polo on? Did it make you angry, sad, or... Are you happy for him, or what's your thoughts about it? Um, made me happy because he's doing it because he knows that Gold Coast are struggling. You know, I think they've. If you look at the Giants right now, right, they've they've been in the league now for uh, what they were established in two thousand twelve, so eleven years now, and they've made a grand final and numerous of final series where Gold Coast haven't had that step and um they've they've got Dimmer right now and I feel like he's done well. Don't get me wrong, it was a shock seeing him in red. Uh I know I love to see him in the yellow and black, but um the red just shocks me more than ever because I just haven't seen it in a while. And um but yeah, good on Dimmer. I I couldn't I, I'm not mad at him. He's gave us three flags which I before twenty seventeen I would say uh we wouldn't even win one. Um, and now we've won three. So, I, I, you know, I've got, I think it's a good idea. Um, uh, it's kind of a new change now at Tigerland. So, yeah, nothing, nothing to be ashamed about. Uh, but yeah, are, are we boring you there, mate? As you yawn? <laughs> no, no, just sucking in some breathing. <laughs> <laughs> He's so good, mate. Oh, that's great. Um, yeah. I've got a question for you two. Uh, I want. First question is, who do we think is the – who's your premiership tip? And I want you to name a team that you think will do damage in finals that's going to be unexpected. I'll let Harry go because I haven't heard him all podcasts, so Harry can go. Right, mate. Seriously, you Harry. just talk fucking bullshit for eight hours a day. That's all you do, right? <laughs> so my premiership guess is someone outside the top four. Do you say uh, – Oh, I'm going to throw up. How about you just fucking wait and listen? Sydney. I reckon Sydney are just going to come from nowhere. I just have a feeling. I rate that highly because I, I said the same thing. Did you actually? Yeah. I've got it on my board here. I said... How about you stop talking shit about Carlton and just let me say me picks, mate? You fucking froth, Carlton. It makes me sick. I actually don't. This least you've picked them the last four weeks and they've won every week, so... Yeah, right. I was yeah. with you. I was with you watching the Gold Coast game, mate. You were getting excited. Yeah, well, it was a good game. So, and then what was the other question? The one who's going to do damage in the finals that was unexpected. Unexpected, yeah. So I, I mean, just, you could say the same Sydney for that too. I mean, I could say Sydney, but I'm just going to go with St Kilda. I'm going to say they're going to win the first final and maybe the second against the team who gets. T- Oh, I don't know. Well, I don't reckon we'll. I don't reckon we'll finish sixth though. I reckon we'll fall to eighth. Yeah. So, do you reckon right. with the Sydney thing? Yeah. Is it possible that they how if they go deep into September, will we see Buddy? I think we have to. He's a finals player. That's like what he's known for. I think you've got to bring him back. But just sorry to get in there here, but. Sydney have announced that he will be doing a lap of honour round twenty this week. He's I didn't say that. Yeah, but if yeah. they, I reckon we need to a prelim. Yeah. Are you picking, buddy? Yes. Are I you are you telling him? 
Are you telling him yeah. start the finals? You've got two weeks to prepare if we make like prepare like you're playing a prelim. Oh, he ripped his well, he what he ripped his calf what three weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. So you by the first final, it's been five weeks. Usually, if you do a bad calf, it's about six six weeks, right? Yeah. But it's going to be a risk to play him, but it's fucking... I think you've got to. He's not playing ever again. Buddy Franklin, so... And just a quick one as well. <clears throat> Everyone's forgotten about the pre-finals bry. That's so, what I'm... So that's probably, um, yeah. Like, it'll be good for Nick Dacos. I know he'll be probably back first, I reckon, the semi-final. Um, so... Out yeah, of everyone, race today at training, so that's pretty big. Everyone's just forgotten about the pre-finals buy, so uh, I think it's actually a great idea for for the clubs who may have been relying on an injury like Nick Dacos for the Pies, and of course Buddy Franklin. So that could uh, be very good for for both sides. Yeah, I agree. So, who's your prediction then, Blakey? Give us a prediction for the flag. Yep. And Caden um, I think Brisbane. Um, I think Brisbane. You know, if you have a look at it right, if they get a first final at the Gabba and they win that, they've got another final at the Gabba, and their momentum will be through the roof uh, heading into the grand final because they know that they can do it. Um, but I honestly, I've said it from the start that they will win the flag. But and everyone's like, at the MC. You know, that's, that's the thing. Everyone's saying that, but if you give them two finals at the Gabba, their confidence is is going to be through the roof, I reckon. So, and the second part of your question, who I think will be, um, you know, up there, mate. This is much you're going to hate me saying this. I've got to say Carson because they're they're the informed team right now. They've won nine games in a row, potentially ten now. Uh, this week, and they're going to be raging for a conference, and two of their best players aren't even playing, which is ridiculous on how they're winning all these games. Sam Walsh and Adam Chera. Uh, Back this week. Yeah, so there you go. They haven't even had their two best players playing in their in their sort of games. I know you, you hate Carlton, which is, you know, respectable. Not many teams do like them, but um, that's how I see it. It's interesting though because you look at Carlton, the way that they've been so good the last few weeks is without Walsh and blokes like George Hewitt have stepped up and they're the bigger body midfield and they're, they're, they're winning it at the source around the contested ball. Walsh comes back in, does he go back into the midfield? Like he's not known for his contested possessions. If I was Carlton, I'd be playing Walsh on a wing and leaving the midfield how it is with uh, you can put Cherry in that midfield mix because he's so good in and out. But their starting midfield, you've got to go with Cripps, Hewitt, and Chera. You've got to have Walsh on the wing, I reckon, because he, he'll just upset that balance that they've had and got right the last few weeks. Yeah, I'd agree. I think he's got to play on a wing. I think Cripps is too good. You're not moving him for Walsh. I wouldn't move Chera after his year this year. And the way that Hewitt's playing right now, I don't think you can take him out of a midfield and play him on a wing because he's not really he's not as much outside as Welsh can be, and Welsh can damage you on the outside. Yeah, he can, but yeah, I just think George Hewitt, the way he's played lately, has been too good to push him out of the midfield. Oh. Yeah, I'd agree. And Doherty's been going through there as well, but he he would just slot straight back in across half back and do what he does best. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's all we oh we got a few retirees to talk about. Uh, yeah. Phil Davis today. Yep. Uh, Nick Nanui last week. Did we speak about him on the show? Yeah, don't... we spoke about him. We did, did we? Did we? Yeah, I think we did. I don't think we spoke about Jack Rewalt. He was the other one because he announced. Uh, I think we did, didn't we? Uh, oh, we... No, we did. no, no, it was last week. My bad, sorry. Yep. Um, uh, he's, a, he's an absolute champion player. Some people hate him. Some people think he's a flog, but he's just a legend to the I game. Think... And he's a Hall of Famer. He's going to be a future Hall of Famer. So there you go. Yeah. Thanks, All right. Blake. Good on you, Blakey. Uh, I think that's it for AFL, boys. Yeah. We'll move on to the FIFA World Cup. Yes, sir. Uh, did you boys watch the Matildas? The other, the other, um, that, the, the, 
Two yeah. games since. Did you watch the France game? Or did we talk about that one? We did, didn't we? I mean, the England game, sorry. Yeah, so I was at AV Park uh, for that yeah. game. I was, I did go to Fed Square, but Fed Square was uh, chockers. So I had to catch a train and uh, head to uh, AV Park. And the scenes there was very electric when uh, the great Sam Kerr kicked that, uh, when it, that, that goal. That was pretty fucking good, wasn't it? Well, it was. Yeah. yeah. And then we just fell apart from there, really. Like, so they scored two pretty easy goals after that. Like, Yes. Disappointing yeah. way to end it, but yeah. proud of them to get to the semi finals even. Did we watch the uh the uh bronze medal game, boys? I watched it briefly at the footy club after the game, but Yeah, I watched it. Yeah. No, you didn't. I was with you, you idiot. Yeah, we watched it. Oh, oh we watched some bit with Taryn, yeah. We watched a little bit. Yeah. Not all of it. Nah. Yeah. But who actually won it? Spain. Uh, did you watch this? I watched the, watch the Spain England game. That's the one I watched, not the Sweden. Yeah, didn't watch it, no. I Apparently, watched it. Um, Piers Morgan was back at it again, boys. If you're interested in watching that, folks. Of course he was. So uh, there was a uh, Twitter um, message that someone sent to him saying, uh, England, it's just something about England always finishing second in these sort of. Uh, Things and uh, Piers Morgan, uh, <laughs> the great Piers Morgan, as he's done for the last couple of weeks about Australia months, saying, "Didn't we beat you in a semi-final in front of your home country and fans?" And uh, that was the most sweetest thing that's ever happened to me in the last couple of months. Well, how about the Ashes? How about the Nepal World Cup? Get that up, yeah, you piece of shit. Yeah, fuck you, Piers Morgan, you fuckhead. He's he's yeah. like the cane corns of the uh, English, I reckon. He's worse than Kane Corns, I reckon. I'm I'm honestly yeah. going to say Kane Corns is better than that bloke. I can't believe I'm saying it, but I watched an interview today of Tex Walker, and one of the um, the one of the questions was like, Kane Corns, your mate, was asking about Rory Sloan and his oh, contract next year, and Tex Walker goes, "Don't ever call him my mate again." It's fucking brilliant. That's good from the Texan. I did see That's that. why I love him. That's why I love the Texan. I yeah. just love him. Good, yeah. Mm. Very good. Yeah. All right, well, we'll move on to the EPL. So I'll start us off here a little bit. Um, bit of a up-and-comer here, Brighton sitting top of the table um, ahead of Man City to start off. I know it's only been two games, but we scored four goals in each game, I think. They have all five and three, maybe, but they're looking good. Same with Brentford. They're sitting third. Um, you boys know anything about the EPL? or No. Nah. No, I'm a, I'm oh. a proud Chelsea man. So, uh, so He's your fine. team sucks. So <laughs> I'll they you. lost. They lost to West Ham on the weekend. Yeah. Yep. I go for Man United. So, Ooh. just a no, little bit better team. than you. Wrong team. Wrong team. Yes. I'll follow. I'm going to go for Tottenham because of the Aussie coach. Tottenham Hotspurs. All what right. do we think of Tottenham? <laughs> Don't know. I'm either. <laughs> What do we Dude, think? Dude, haven't you seen that got that famous quote that they do? <laughs> I don't know. I know what you're talking about. I have no clue what it is, though. It's directed at Tottenham. They That's what they do it for. They do it at uh, Tottenham. So there's a fact. Thanks, Blakey. I'll <laughs> get that one in the back pocket for next week. No problem. Um, Yeah, good on you, Blake. Thanks. That's mate. about it, though. And then we've got just that Erling Hallard again, scoring in the first 45 seconds. Um. Nothing new for him, though. He's a good player. I don't know who that is, but yeah. Good, He's good. the best player in the world, probably. He's probably oh, yeah. the best player in the whole Premier League. He's like yep. Dustin Martin at the moment, I reckon. Well, He's back, better, back than, all better than Dustin ago. Martin. He's better than what Dusty was, though, if I'd have to say. He just dominates. There's not, like, no one can stop him. Yeah. Mm. All right, are we up to the segments now? Or... Oh, no, no, no. No. We are... oh. Jesus, mate. Hold your horses. Yeah, far out. One, waiting or something, mate. One thing that I forgot to mention in the our our script that we we um we have is the um FIBA Mems World Cup in basketball. Like oh, oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> oh, I was I was thinking about it before. I was like, oh fuck, I forgot about the FIFA basketball. Yeah. World. Um, I can give you an update if you want there, uh, boys. Um, Australia's so first should... games on Friday against Finland. Yeah, I think that's correct. Yes. Um, 
But just a quick one. Um, so Australia, their warm-up games, I think they've got Japan or China coming up in the next couple of days. Um, but anyway, just to recap, their first game, uh, they uh, took on a country that I've never known about. I, don't, I still don't know what their country is called. Venezuela. Yeah, some random country that's probably on an island somewhere. I don't know. Um, and then they played Brazil in a tough loss there. But then they backed it up with a 20-point victory over uh, South Sudan. So that's good. But a couple of injury blows in the France game. They won by four points. Even though they won by four points, uh, uh, Green, oh, he just can't pronounce his first name. Is it... Uh, What's his first name? Josh Green. Green. Josh Green, that's it, yep. Um, Not that hard word, is it, Blakey? Uh, did his ankle and uh, someone else as well did his knee or something as well. I think it was Paddy Mills. Yeah, it was Paddy Mills. I'm just reading off my research notes here, boys. Uh, but he he's done. I wouldn't say he's done, but he was done for the night. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. Unfortunately, boys, with this boomer side, I'm not confident. I don't think with Jock Landau going down, that's yeah. just put us down uh, a lot. And I honestly don't think we'll make a semi final. This you, you guys can come back at me and say this, but I honestly don't think we'll go and make it a, a semi final because it's going to be tough. I'm telling you, it's going to be very tough. And um, yeah, it'll be tough to the fact that we just got no tools. Like Jock yeah. Landau's a massive out. Yeah. Mm. I think it's up to Gerald Reef to step up and play that role. Jack White's not that tall, is he? He's not a centre. He's is six, he? eight, six, ten. Yeah, he's there. not tall. But Gerald Reef, he stood up in the other game, though. He still stood up the last couple. So we might see a little bit from him, but I just don't think he's got enough. Yeah. yeah it's just... Maybe Xavier Cooks even might need to step up as well. So He was playing a little bit at the centre, but he's too undersized as well, I think. But Yeah. Do it doesn't any World Cup you think USA are a lock to win it, so any team but them I'll be happy. <laughs> I don't think it'll be any other team except for them, to be honest. Maybe well, Canada. They did, they did lose to their B side though. Yeah, USA. but that's yeah, US B's. Yeah. Spain are pretty good as well. They'll be all right. Yeah. They're always I mean, Spain are always there. France are always there. Um Germany even, they're always there. But mm. my dark horse for the tournament uh, is uh, Luca uh, Luca's team. Uh, Slovenia. Yeah, I think they're going to be a dark horse. Luca drops like fifty points a game for, for them, especially in the Olympics. Um, all uh, I think a couple of years ago, he dropped like mammoth points, like fifty, sixty. Like he's he's just a freak, Luca. My Smokey's going to be the Canada national team. I reckon they're going to go well. Same. Yeah. Yeah, they got a good team. Yeah, Canada. They got they got France on the first game, so that'd be a tough one. Yeah, it'd be a good one to watch the start of the tournament off, really, for them. Yeah. Just, just a quick one as well. Where are the streams? Like, where can we? Like, I know that Channel Nine was showing it, but surely it's on Fox, Fox and all that. Do you I think just... it'd be on Fox till the actual? I think game. it's on, all on going to be on Ko. Oh, there you go. Okay. Looking at it here. Yeah. I think it should be on Fox then. So that's, that's good. Australia have Japan, Germany, and Finland in their um in their pool. So you'd think they should be able to get the job over for all three of those sides. Through to the knockout stages at least. Yeah, I think so. Don't know, it'd be interesting. Mm, it will be. Anyway, that's enough for the basketball chat, I think. But mm. no Jock Landell, no Aussies, I don't think, for me. I agree with that one. Yeah, I, just... think, I don't think we can do enough. And yeah. especially if Mills is to go down as well, I think we'll struggle even more. Yeah. Um, but just a quick one. All those games will be on ESPN. That's where you'll okay. find okay. Um, okay. all the games uh, for that. So every game. So even if it's uh, Italy versus uh, Mexico or something like that, it'll be on Foxtel. So there you go. Yeah. Good news for me. Well, one of them. Good to hear them. Fun? It's good to hear, Blakey. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Thank you. No problem, mate. Uh, what's next, boys? I think that's... Up to the golf, I think. 
Yeah, oh. I might as well have a sleep while you guys uh, talk about this. All right, sport. fuck off then. You've been yawning already, mate. A little less chit chat from you would be great. <laughs> um, so the release of the last thirty in the Tour Championships was released today. Um, you got your pick for it, Caden. Uh, it's going to be interesting. Victor Hovland came in the BMW Championship. Yeah, he shot 61 course record, nine under to finish and won it. So he's moved is up. He, yeah, is he number one now? No, second. Scotty Sheffield was number one. So Scotty Sheffield will start at 10. Victor will start at eight under. McElroy, seven under. Rahm, six under. And Glover, five under. That's the top five. I thought he was 12 under, Sheffield. No? 10 under. Okay. Um, my tip. You tip to win and your tip to make a move up. We'll just say make a move up. So even from like the lower numbers, we'll say to get make a move towards top. This is that East Lake still, yeah? That yep. we spoke about last week. Yeah. I'm going to stick with my prediction. What's Patrick Cantley starting at? Four under. Four under. So he's six back. Okay. But yeah, but there's a there's two four there's four there's five of them that start at four under. So yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll stick with either Sheffler or Cantley. I'm going with Tommy Fleetwood. That's my guess. He's starting at about two, three under. Okay, yeah. I think Scotty Sheffler will may run away with it, but I'm gonna back Tommy in to come through. Yeah. And I'm hoping Jason Day can be one of the movers and move up towards the top 10. He starts at one under. I was going to say Jason Day, but someone else that I reckon will come up. He's he's already up there, but is Glover. Lucas Glover, he could make a big move. Plays well at East Lake. Does, that's what, that's what I'm thinking. So. But it'd be good. Good to it'd watch. Be good. Uh, you going to watch some of it? I think it's on it's shit times for us, but. Yeah, I might watch a start. Yeah. Or depending on what time it starts and that. I think it's shit timing. I can't remember. Well, as long as it comes down to the last round, it'll be good because sometimes you get the blokes that like Scheffler at the start have a massive lead. Yeah, you want to, I hope, I hope it's close. They get off to a good start in round one or two. It's pr- pretty much over unless they shit the bed like Spieth, But mm, I'm hoping people from two under to four under can make a big move on day one and Scheffler and the ones at the top kind of just hold even. That would be good if they all can be around from 11 under to, say, six under. That would be good to watch. So it's only a field of 30, isn't it? Yeah, 30, and they play all four rounds. Yeah, they'll get through that quick as fuck. Like, yep. Yeah, interesting. Should be good. Yeah, so anything else on the go? Oh, I love the format that they do. In that. Oh, isn't it a good way to finish? You start with the last 75, move yeah. down to the last 50, then move down to the last 30. Yeah, it's unbelievable. It's good stuff. It's a good It's a good way to have it. And I was watching the golf the other day, actually. Yeah. It was really good that they had the live FedEx tracker, like if you make, depending on what you make and where you go and all this. It was good to watch the last bit, like players sitting 30th in the, the tournament still having to go for birdie because they have to make the top 30, stuff like that. It was real good to watch. Yeah. What's um Rory starting at? He'd be about eight, is he? Seven under. Seven under, yeah. Yeah. I'm just looking at the top ten players in the world at the moment, it's pretty. You got Scheffler, McElroy, Rahm, Cantley, Hovland, Shafley, Max Homer, Fitzpatrick, Harmon, and Cameron Smith. Yeah. I think nine of them are PGA players. Nine of them are. Just Smith that isn't. It's live, so. I think all nine of them are in the top 30 as well, so. I think they were from memory. Yeah, they all are from the looks of it. Ethy just qualified as well. That's good. Only Jars. He kind of shot, him, shot, the, shot himself in the foot in the last round. Shot one over. Almost. Almost. Yeah. Only one player came into the 30 that wasn't into, in it before. Who was that? Uh, Matt, Fitzpa- Matt Fitzpatrick came up into 10th from 40. What do you think? Scotty would have just been out the top 30, wouldn't he? Who? Adam Scott. Actually, no, he was like 70th. Was he? I thought you said it was between Spieth and him to... No, he was 70. He, he didn't even make the set the 70. He was 71st uh, in the FedEx. Okay. Um, But yeah, so Matt Fitzpatrick, the only person to get into the 30. And I think say, Seth Fagala didn't make it, I'm pretty sure. He was the one that missed out in the 30 because of it. Yeah, he did, yeah. Yeah. 
first. Justin Rose didn't make it either. There's a lot of good names. Oh, Justin Thomas didn't. He's an old. Nah, Justin Thomas came 72nd or something. Yeah. He didn't even make the BMW Classic, did he? No. Sorry, it was Thomas and Scott that we spoke about. I thought it was Thomas and... Ah, sorry, Spieth and Scott. Yeah. But, yeah, it's about all for the golf, I think, right now. Yeah, I think that's about it. We're going to our segments, or we got another sport? Uh, I think we got NRL to quickly touch on, but there's not... i got I've... no NRL, you're up. We've still got what two more games mean? before their um final series, so... Penrith on top with Broncos, um, New Zealand Warriors, Melbourne Storm, Spinella Sharks, Canberra Raiders, Newcastle Knights, and South Sydney Rabbitohs is the top top eight, but you got North Queensland Cowboys, Sydney Roosters, and... Parramatta Eels right in contention to make the eighth. So, um, yeah, I think we'll touch more on the NRL closer to their finals. Or well, do they have a pre-finals buy nut? No, I think they're straight into it. I think straight into it. Are they? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Alrighty. Alrighty. Segment time. Is am I starting off or? Hell, man, I need to do the famous intro. Oh, come on, uh, Give, go on. It's now time for Doss's Multi. Doss's Multi. All right. I'll quickly go through last week's Multi. Unfortunately, we had a Burt Newton. One leg loss, so spewing. Uh, first leg was Richmond to beat North Melbourne. They won that. West Tigers to beat the Dolphins was a win. Spain to beat Sweden, which was a good win in the FIFA Women's World Cup. Natalia Silva won her USC battle, but unfortunately Chelsea went down to West Ham in the EPL three to one. So that was a big red cross. So fuck you, Chelsea. Um, that's my that's my team, eh? Yeah, I know. That's what I said before. Fuck your team. Uh, but Doss's tip of the week, fangirl, storm time in the Winks. Winks, I can't remember what the race is called now. Wink Classic, wasn't it? Something like that. Wink something. Uh, so, good win to Fangirl. Shout out to Mitch Dillmans. Uh, he was the man that suggested that during the week as well. So, it was a bit of a joint joint tip, but um, he sort of got me over the line with it. So, good on you, Mitch. I'll quickly go through this week's multi and this week's tip. So, starting off. In the NRL, Sydney Roosters to defeat the West Tigers. That's giving you a dollar seventeen. Arsenal to beat Fulham in the EPL. That's giving you a dollar twenty. I've backed the Aussies in the basketball to beat Finland in their first grade in their first match. That'll give you a dollar seventeen. And I've also tipped France to beat Canada in their first game, paying at a dollar eighty three. That'll be a close game. It's a bit of a risky one. That one. And then I've tipped Sri Lanka to beat Bangladesh in the Asia Cup in the cricket, paying a dollar fifty. So you chuck all those five legs into a, a multi and it'll give you four dollars and ninety three. So chuck a fiver or a tenner on that like I did last week, and you'll be uh a winner of five green. Gamble there as well. Uh, yeah, yet. Hang on, man, I'm not done yet. Oh, and then no. my tip of the week is uh Number two, race five at Randwick Kensington on Wednesday. Our favourite jockey, J Mac, is on it. Whip it, J Mac. The, yep, that's it. Say it again, Blakey. Whip it, J Mac. <laughs> nice little voice break there, mate. <laughs> but uh, the tip is uh, number two, Strewn Bus, race number five. So jump on that, J Mac. It's been freshened up. He gave a good side at Randwick last year. Adding, had two win, uh, had a win two starts back. So, bit of a weaker field. It'll take a bit to be beaten. So, there's my tip of the week. Doss's multi and tip is over and done for this week. So, whoever out of you two knuckleheads is taking over next, take it away. No problem, alrighty. It's time for overreaction or reaction. So, I'll find some interesting stuff. That happened on the week of football, and of course other sports as well. Not just football, but I do have. A, a, there's a lot of football elements. But the first one I want to do, the hot topic of the weekend, is the 
AFL score review system, is it working? Overreaction or reaction? I would say... I'd say it's working. I think the umpires need to use it, though. Yeah. So what are you going, overreaction or reaction? I guess it's... Is that reaction, then? Overreaction. Overreaction. It's, uh, it's working. It's working, but it's... The issue that it's, caused on the weekend wasn't the score review. Yeah, I would say it's a reaction that it's being used correctly, but an overreaction to say that it's just purely the fault of the score review system. Yeah. Uh, just a quick one as well. Have Essendon gone backwards? Overreaction or a reaction? Oh. I'm going to go overreaction. Where did they finish last year? Uh, Just outside as well. I think tenth as well yeah. wasn't it? The way they started this year was, um, pretty good. So I'm going to say that's a reaction because yeah, I reckon they have gone backwards. Yeah, um, and their list just isn't going anywhere. Like it's the same blokes. Like you got Zach Merritt and Darcy Parish carrying the midfield load, and then blokes like Jake Stringer let you down again and. It's just the same old shit with Essendon. So I wouldn't be surprised if they do a... Brad Scott does a massive clean out at the end of the season. And uh, this is all I've got to say. So should we be worried about Collingwood heading into a finals campaign? Overreaction or reaction? Reaction. Yeah. Um, I think... I'm going to say overreaction because you take out... Collingwood's probably top three players in Darcy Moore, Nick Dacos, and Dugowie. Yeah. And then you lose Murphy in that third quarter. And to only lose to Brisbane by four goals. Um, and they had probably a lot more to play for than what we did. It's probably an overreaction, but there's worrying signs there for sure. But I think yeah. the way the media's blown it out and saying oh, Collingwood. But I, even then again, I said that they wouldn't win a final, so... Yeah, and just as well, having a look at the past uh, premiers as well, like Richmond have won five in a row. I think Geelong won five in a row, obviously. And Collingwood now sits at one and three, so I think that's their record uh, sitting on top of the ladder, kind of thing from Fox Footy. So it's going to be interesting. Mm. Yeah, work, Mikey. Yeah. Are you all done with your segment, mate? Yes, mate. All over to you, big boy. All right. My hot take is just a quick one here. Um, a team from outside the top four will win the AFL Premiership. That's my hot take. What's that? Are you listening or what? No, get off your phone. Out. It broke out. And get off your phone, mate. Come on. I am off my phone. <clears throat> all right. Someone from outside the top four will win the Premiership this year. That's my hot take. What do you boys think? Mm. No, I'm sorry. No. Yeah, no. I think I think it would be one of the sides in the top four. I just can't see. You think about it, you to come to make a grand final from outside the top four. You either got to play a prelim final at the Gabba, Adelaide Oval, or you play Collingwood and Mel or Melbourne at the MCG. Like, you're going to have to be playing some fucking good footy to do it. And I just don't see any of the last four teams doing that. Mm-hmm. That's fair enough. I think I think it will happen, but that's why I'm here to have a hot take. Yeah, no, fair enough. Um, and then I've got a hot tip for this week as well. I've actually gone race four at Randwick Kensington on uh, Wednesday. Number two shines. Why the yeah. f- what, are you still my segment now, are you? I'm not still in your segment. I'm just the only, I just wanted to be included, mate. Sorry. Who is it? Race what? Race number four. Number two shines, Once. yeah, it's looking good the last last couple of races. Come top two in all of them, so that's my bet. Get six bucks, so get on it. Does like two twelve fifty exactly in form. So mm. there you go. Very good, mate. Very good. Righty, alrighty. So that uh, is our three. Segments. Uh, I think that pretty much wraps up the show. Any last words, boys? Anything that you want to say before we uh, finish off? No, but just keep an eye out on the socials because we'll 
there's a few more guest yeah. speakers we've got right up our sleeves, so you wouldn't want to miss yeah. out on those ones, especially with the AFL finals coming up. We got a big one coming up, I reckon. So, yeah, so don't I'm go in, anywhere. I'm in the talks at the moment with a uh, uh, AFL player. Just mm. that's an inside word, so I'm trying to trying to get him across. Uh, but he's a very popular man by demand, so it's going to be pretty hard. But I will. Swing my wings around and uh, I'm on though, so don't worry about that. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, I think that will wrap it up. So, as Dossa said, get on the socials, have a look, send us a DM. I went on there the other day and I found absolutely nothing. So, please, can you just send us something? Please, anything, anything you want to say. If, if it's Harry's rude head or you know. I'm talking rubbish or something like that. Just send that in, please, because um, it's a big one there. Um, anyway, boys, thanks for coming on. Big episode tonight, but uh, I'm sure we've got plenty more. I reckon next week as well, just a quick one, we will give our NBL season predictions as the season is one month away. So stay tuned for that. Yeah, anyway, I, boys, and been the, a pleasure. Season. Uh, good, good to see you. And the AFLW predictions as well, Blakey. Oh, yes. Can't forget that. All starts uh, on the second, I think, too. So uh, that's going to be magnificent. I might even start watching it, uh, of course, with the pre-finals by. So I might watch a bit of AFLW football. Although no, you'll be supporting and rooting for your Brisbane Lions in the AFLW, Caden. Absolutely, mate. <laughs> Go the Lions. Oh, well, it's been a pleasure, Caden. Uh, thanks for jumping on again, mate. Nah, thanks, Blakey. Loved it. Great, great special guest in old mate Wayno. So, yeah, I'll be hitting Wayno up for some NBL tickets. I reckon for sure. Me too. That will be amazing. And for you, Harry, uh, thanks for coming in and out of the podcast, even though you have a little, uh, little delay there uh, when you're on there. But that's okay, mate. It's good to see. You. Uh, well, good to see you back for another episode, mate. Thanks, Blakey. Great seeing your head every week, mate. You love it, mate. Anyway, thanks for listening. Uh, see you next week. See you, guys.